Hey there, I'm going to be going through what I found to be my favorite way to level new characters in Crucible League. If you've seen the very popular builds revolving around totem trap explosions, you may know where this is going. In this setup, we make use of the totem explode node. As you can see here, totems explode on death, dealing X percentage of their life as physical damage from a very early level. This setup can be done for every ascendancy with some tweaks and requires no real tree to be effective, making it super effective for minimizing regret orbs once you've finished leveling. Leveling uniques, I recommend a tabula, which is the basic obvious choice for a leveling six link. I have a praxis because this build suffers real bad from mana problems while leveling. I want a lahup, uh, mostly for its res. It has a global damage modifier, which works with explode, which is nice, and it has some free attributes as well. Boldrum, basically just for the res, it gives a ton of free res, which is really good throughout the axe. I run an astramentus to make sure we will always have the stats to level up all of our gems throughout. Uh, leveling because for example if you level this as a witch you will have severe issues with strength since Reju of Totem is a strength jewel you can see that at the level that I finished the axe at it requires 136 strength. Uh, I also recommend anointing this with either Ironwood or Primal Manifestation if we look on the atlas. This is prim Primal Manifestation. It is a totem life node. It is closer to the top left of the tree whereas Ironwood is down here on the bottom of the tree. Um, depending on which ascendancy you are. So for example, if you're doing this as a marauder or a duelist or a ranger, I recommend going for Ironwood manually. Whereas for other ascendancies, you can go for Primal Man Manifestation manually. Go like that. I recommend getting one and anointing the other just because Totem Life is such a serious uh, damage gain in this build. Um, and for other uniques, I use a Belt of the Deceiver. This one's kind of minor. It has life, a little bit of Ellie res. Uh, it has a global damage or global fizz modifier. And it's worth knowing that the Intimidate on this belt does not work, so don't, don't think this is providing you 10% damage. It does not apply to the secondary damage when the totem explodes. Uh, and the last two uniques are Crim Sorrow. I use this for a full cold convert. You can put this from level 9. This is very this is very good for scaling the explosion damage very easily. You pick up cold nodes on the tree. Uh, and then for boots, you can either take Deer Stalkers, which is a nice quality of life because it gives a lot of movement speed. You get 15 base and then 15 every time you throw a trap. You're constantly throwing traps, so this is basically a 30% movement speed boot. Uh, and trap throwing speed is also incredibly convenient. Uh, the other option is a Gold Rim, uh, which is basically the the staple leveling boot. With uh, cannot be frozen, it has good movement speed, and it provides a bunch of uh, mana regen as well. That uh, sums up my leveling uniques. Um, and for gems, you see I have it in my inventory here. There's not a lot of gems needed in this build. So basically, Rejuve Totem is available at level four. This will go into your primary link. At level eight, you have access to traps and multi-trap. I actually don't recommend using the totem setup until you hit level eight, just because other skills generally do it better until you have access to traps to start really dumping out totems and rapid firing the explosion hits. So once you hit eight, you can put these in a three link with each other. You can also put them in the deer stalkers at level 22 whenever you reach that point. At level 16 in act two, I recommend grabbing the Herald of Purity gem. This gives you a more physical damage modifier, which works with the explosion of uh, the totem explosions from the node. As you can see here, it deals their life as physical damage. This applies before the Fizz Convert from Prim Sorrow, so it will still work with that as well. At level 24 in Act 3, you can pick up both Discipline and Hatred. Now, Discipline is dependent on what Ascendancy you are. For example, if you are in the top half of Ascendancies that start in the top half of the tree, I very, very, very highly recommend going Eldritch Battery. This solves an overwhelming amount of mana problems in this build for leveling. If you are in the bottom half of the tree, I very highly recommend going, uh, where is it? Blood magic over here. This basically makes it so you just have to chug uh, more life flasks. Uh, you can run vitality as well in place of it. Basically, mana is a huge problem in this build. You see, uh, if I put this on and throw my links in correctly, uh, one second. you can see just how much mana this build takes about probably a hundred close to a hundred maybe a little bit less because i have 67 mana you can see even with having 700 es i'm still going through my es quite rapidly 
with natural ES regeneration, your normal mana does not regen regenerate nearly as fast. Once I break through the ES, you can see that I'm going to start going down quite rapidly in mana. You can see my mana going down very quickly. So that's why I recommend going either Blood Magic here, if you're a Marauder, Duelist, or Ranger. Even Ranger can go get Eldritch Battery realistically. And if you are a Templar, which or Shadow, I recommend going straight to Eldritch Battery. It is extremely good. Once you start getting trap supports, you're going to start going through mana like crazy. It's very good very early. The rest of the gems, and as I mentioned, discipline. If you're if you're in the bottom half of the tree, just replace with vitality and crank it up as high as you can. Inspiration, for the same reason I just mentioned, very good at mitigating our mana problems. You can put this on at level 31. And then at the end of Act 4, when you get the big boy support gems, you can put on multi-totems and cluster traps. This is when your damage seriously starts to pop off. At this point, you will have been doing pretty good damage with Rejuve Totem multi-trap trap support, but it really starts to go off, as you'll see in some of the clips. When you reach multi-totem and cluster traps, you just start absolutely deleting everything. You just toss one cluster at any pack, you toss three clusters at any boss, everything just dies. I just want to quickly touch on some of the important tree nodes that you may find yourself uh, trying to get to make your ease of leveling a little bit easier. Uh, first of all, because this build doesn't really scale with a lot of things due to it being a secondary damage hit, like spell damage, damage added damage to spells, Added damage to attacks don't scale the damage of this considering it is not considered a spell or an attack. Only things that say generically percent added cold damage, for example, percent increased elemental damage, only these will apply to the damage of the totem explode. Um, for that reason, there's not a ton of things you will want to grab on the tree for damage, and to be honest, you don't need them anyway. The totem, the base damage of the totem just do ludicrous damage. So what I recommend doing is either following your tree for your build, regardless of whether or not you're actually building your build for leveling, um, or you can do what I do, which is I tend to just grab every single life node on the entire tree uh, near the general area that I'll be building my tree. This is also partially because at this point in the league, with how cheap they are, I would also recommend when you finish the campaign, you can just buy a five-way carry and go spend one or two divines and go straight to level like 95 to 97. And to do those, I reckon you will want a very large amount of life. That way you can not die, basically, is the gist of it. But other than that, cold mastery for cold exposure on cold damage, because we're cold converting, this can happen. You can amplify it with elementary ma elemental mastery, which will amplify that 10% up to 18, as well as just being a good generic node to work with. Trap masteries are generally good if you have trap masteries. There's not many of them on the tree, and most of them are in the shadow area, if not all of them, yeah. So if you're in this area, a couple of them that are good. Master Sapper's very good. This one is somewhat good. This one's, don't, assuming you don't take high explosive, because this one's correlated. But for example, in this one, this one I took a bunch of, because it has trap throwing speed and trap AOE, which is particularly good while leveling. You can take a trap mastery, I have a percent chance to throw additional traps. This is not particularly good until you have cluster traps, because when you only have multi-traps, you just kind of throw them in a line. And when this procs, you just throw them in a longer line, which doesn't really help your single, tar single target at all. So when you get cluster traps, you can take this mastery, but otherwise just fall off on that point. Other than that, I recommend, as I mentioned before, you're going to want to get totem life nodes. You're going to want to get it, get one yourself and you're going to want to anoint the other one. This is a just insane amount of just raw damage that you can get for basically free due to how hard uh, Totem Life scales our damage. And other than that, your tree can be basically whatever else you want. Uh, a good note if you're in the Ranger area is the Cold Mastery down here. These is Cold damage and then 14% fizz as extra cold. Fizz as extra cold scales your damage a ton. This is these are great nodes if you're a ranger or a duelist and are like pathing in this area. And you also get the cold mastery for free in that area. Um, and one last note, as I mentioned before, Eldritch Battery. Basically mandatory if you want to run the auras in this build. Same thing with blood magic. Although with blood magic, it gets a little bit trickier because you can't really run the auras, but it will solve your mana problems. 
You can find your other ways around it as well, but those are the two easiest ways to handle it, and those are the two ways I recommend. Next thing I want to touch on is the creation of the leveling totem explode weapon. So you can do it as a wand, realistically, you could probably do it as a bow as well, but either way, they're stupid expensive if they even exist at all. Like, for example, wand required level 8, which is low level. Basically, this is 8 is ideal, because that's when you get your trap supports and when you want to start using uh, the totem explode. You can see that people that are aware of this are selling them for quite a hefty amount of money because people are, are doing this strategy. They're leveling with totems and it's so good. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 2.5 divines on a leveling weapon. That's kind of ridiculous. I'd rather just spend the extra time that it would have saved me than spend upwards of five divines if you were to buy two of these. Now, the easiest way to create your own is the first step is to go into Lion's Eye Watch, Act 1. So we're currently in Act 1, Lion's Eye Watch. Your first step is to buy a base that you can equip on a character. So for example, Goat Horns work, Driftwood Wands, if they are here, will work. Other wands are higher eye levels, so 12 would work, but it's not ideal. I would recommend Goat Horn or a Driftwood Wand. You would buy this. I had already bought one here. The next step you would do is you would run a map. If you're at mapping eye level already, you would run a map, identify it. And what I recommend doing is actually fully, not fully charging it, but like charging it so that you can get the first two nodes. This is because when you're forging something, it generally prefers to keep the nodes you have allocated. So for example, if this did not have the totem explode node, and I identified this tree and this was just something else, this third node here was just something random and bad, what I would want to do is to allocate the first two nodes because I'm aware that these nodes would be usable at a low level because they came naturally on my wand. You would want to allocate these two so they have a higher chance of staying on the wand. And then you would want to buy a wand. So if we look at the trade site, we're gonna step away from this, from this uh, really expensive wand. What you will want to look for is uh, this node here, reduce totem life, totem explode on death, dealing 200% of your life is physical damage. You can't use 300 because it has a uh, weapon modifier. It has a required level of, that is too high. Uh, so if we look here, this is the PODB site for the weapon passives. I'm currently under wand weapon passives. You can see that the higher tier one has an effective requirement. This is the level requirement if you have it on and allocated. On your weapon, it has a level requirement of 48. This is why, if you look at my weapons in game, you'll notice even though they're driftwood ones and they're completely white, they have level requirements. That is because these nodes that are before the totem explode node are actually having a level requirement of I believe this one. It is this node here, this crit chance one with the crit multi. This has a level requirement of eight, which is why this wand is eight. And then this one, I believe it is the spell damage and maximum energy shield node. This one requires level 16, which is why this one requires 16. This is something you have to be aware of when looking at wands. And this is why you want to allocate the nodes on your freshly identified wand, because you would want to keep these instead of accidentally forging on a node that could make your item require a ludicrous level. So that's why you would buy a base wand allocate the first two nodes, look for a totem explode node on the trade site of on any eye level because we're going to be forging it onto the low eye level one. We don't have to worry about the eye level on the thing we're looking for the node with. What I would look for is look for the totem node in the third column. So for example, Miracle Edge, this would work. You also want to make sure you're respecting your natural, your wand's tree. So for example, if we look at this one, if this is the one we're working with, we want to respect the tree of this, which means we want to make sure it is going, it goes up. And then we want to make sure that it branches either up or down off of this node. And if we look back at the trade site, we can see that the wand that we were looking at does do that. We can see that if we went up, it would connect off down off of the second node. We want to make sure you're respecting the tree. 
What you would do is you would buy this wand, run a basic map, annul off this, because we don't want to get the high tier modifiers, and you would go into a forge using a primeval remnant, which are the igneous geode maps, these things. You would take one of these and you would put the low eye level wand on the bottom and you would put the high eye level wand that you bought on the trade site, these, on the top. And basically you're just gambling and hoping that the totem explode node that is on the third column, we're hoping that the totem explode node sticks and that we keep our low tier modifiers on the two that connect to it. If you succeed, then you'll get a low eye level wand like this that has two low level modifiers into a totem node on a base that doesn't require a high item level. A little bit tricky, but it's definitely more worth than spending three divines. Realistically, you could probably level the character faster than making the wands yourself, but I crafted them because it seemed fun. And yeah, this is... That's how, you, that's how you would make a wand manually if you wanted to. Or you can just buy them or borrow them from someone. Either way works. But yeah, you will need two wands that have low item level requirements for this, for this leveling strategy to work. 